So another way to start getting people's attention and to maybe generate some opportunities for live shows for you is to think about showcasing. So that means attending conferences and entering in different sort of events and contests and things like that. And I'll link a bunch of conferences and stuff below here that you should check out. But in Canada, the main ones that you know, I did for years, which led to a lot of great connects, people that I'm still using. So Canadian Music Week was a big one. North by Northeast, South by Southwest, Canadian Country Music Week, Breakout West. There's a lot of talent showcases. There's a lot of competitions and ways to just get out there and be connected with your music community. And you know, there's, there's tons of really great ones you can check out and apply for. Um, maybe even get nominated for an award as a, a rising star or, or whatever they call the new artist category. Here's a hot tip if you're gonna be doing that. Most of the work at these conferences don't get done in the clubs. That's not where people are making the number one connections. Where it all goes down is the hotel bar. I cannot stress this enough. Hang out, have a drink in the hotel bar, and just chat some people up. I mean, it's gonna go a long way. I've, I've met so many you know, upper level industry people just not attending one of the info sessions and hanging out, grabbing a drink with, you know, the head of one of the biggest agencies in North America or something like that. And that actually happens. So check that out. Uh, I'll link all this stuff below. You can, you can check out those conferences too. So after that, a lot of it is honestly, it's the hustle game. I mean, go to shows, meet bands, pay attention to who's there, try and, I don't know, meet a promoter or figure out who's on the team of some of these bands that are touring that maybe are starting to get some attention. I'm not, I'm not talking about like the biggest bands in the world that are on the radio and stuff like that, but just people that are coming through your hometown that are maybe not from your hometown. You can weasel your way into their circles a little bit, make some friends online, make sure you know um, who the MD is at your local radio station or you know find little inroads into places where you can benefit from that relationship and, and those people will nine or ten times if you come to somebody and you say listen I really want your opinion on something I'm looking to figure out how to get to this next step or I'm looking to do this specific thing people love to give advice they, it, it empowers them it makes them feel like they're a part of your story so make sure you're doing that kind of a hustle game and you know, make some stuff online. It costs you nothing. You can do it with your cell phone. Create really interesting musical pieces of content, I guess. You know, like there's, we've all heard the story of like the, the TikTok heroes and all that stuff. And you don't necessarily have to do that, but do a strange cover of something or find a new take on something that hasn't been done before. You gotta just really get creative and that, that really does get a lot of attention and it gives you just another nugget of content to show people um, some personality. And honestly, I always think that personality wins in the end. So do that. Number two, what types of shows are there and how do they pay? First one, um, a guarantee. This is my favorite because it's completely predictable. You get an offer for a certain amount um, and that's the show, that's what you get paid regardless of how many people come or how many people don't come. Typically what my agent does is they'll collect half like a deposit up front from the show and I'll get paid physically at the show by the promoter at the end of the day and then later on my agent will send me a check for the rest of it minus his cut. Super easy to do it that way. I love a guarantee. Guarantee me some money. This thing's still on. Yeah, there's a little red light. Um, okay, so the next one is door deals. Door deals are okay. I mean, this is, it's, if you're a band that's starting to get some stuff going on, but you're still kind of on that indie level, you're still lower down, it could be a great thing. If you can sell out a show and have a good percentage on the back end, like a door deal, typically what a door deal is, you take a percentage of the door and the venue takes a percentage of the door, or you get all the door and the venue just takes the liquor and whatever, food, if there's food there. Or if you're, you know, if you're a larger band and you're really confident that you can sell a place out and you know what the ticket price is and you know what your overages are, there's a great chance that you can make some money doing that. It's a little bit more risky to do a door deal because if no one shows up, you might not get paid. That's kind of the reality of it. So if you know your market really well, kind of predict what your costs are gonna be, what the, the net you can get is on it. It's not a bad option. So there's also um, combo deals. You can do, uh, some people might offer you X amount of dollars plus 
80% of the door or 20% of the door, whatever it is. And so that's kind of a, an interesting way for a promoter to give incentive for the artist to bring people to the show. It takes a little bit of the risk away from, from the promoter. Uh, which I don't hate either, you know, I, I fully understand why a promoter would do something like that. I prefer a guarantee all the way, but I um, mean, if it's a market I really want to get into, or it's a market that's not 100% sure about, or a venue I'm not familiar with, it's an interesting thing that I would consider for sure. It's hot in here, Jesus. Um, oh, just fix you there. Looking good. Yes. All right, so the other way you can get paid from a show isn't by the promoter, which is sort of a strange thing to say. All these venues typically have to pay some sort of a fee or whatever it is to organizations like in Canada, SOCAN. So it's a venue fee and what that means is that as a songwriter, um, you can actually register for live performance royalties. So every time you have a show, you should always make sure you have some sort of proof like a ticket stub or a poster and, and your set list and that's all it takes. And you can go on the SOCAN website, which I'll link below, um, as well as the American counterparts. Yeah, you can just submit for a live performance royalty. And you'd be surprised actually, if, you, if you're on it and you're doing it and you're playing consistently, it, it can be money. I mean, I remember in 2007, I opened for, man, that was a long time ago. Uh, 2007, I opened up for Bon Jovi twice and we submitted for live performance royalty. And for those two shows, each of them was like $2,000 or something crazy. So, I mean, I, that was 17,000 people. But, um, you know, even if you're playing for rooms of 500 and you do 100 shows, or, I mean, that's a lot of shows in a year, but you get my point. Um, that can add up. It's just extra, it's free money that's just sitting there, so you should always be submitting for your live performance royalties. So, um, one thing I should say is that sometimes it's okay to take a free show. Stay with me because that is nothing I would ever say to you. You should always be paid to do your shit. There's two types of shows you should take. You should take, you should take it for the money, or you should take it for the look. Hopefully most are both, but if you're getting paid complete shit to play for 6,000 people at the Calgary Stampede that have never heard of you before, take the show. You know what I mean? Like sometimes there's, uh, there's hills that are not worth dying on, and if it's a great show and the promoter is topped out on what they can offer you, figure out a way to do it because it can lead to more stuff. Uh, and you know, sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes it's a show you don't want to do, but you think about the money that could come into your pocket that could fund future content, travel, paying your band, buying fucking, buying groceries or feeding your kids or whatever it is. That's, that's what you should be doing. Yeah. This guitar is so out of tune. Maybe it's me. So the fourth thing that, let's do this, fourth? <laughs> the fourth thing you should remember uh, about when you're making decisions that could affect which shows you're gonna get and your approach to shows. Think about a couple things. There's a lot of costs attached to playing live sometimes. For example, you know, if I should do a full band set versus an acoustic songwriter set. A huge one is travel because in country music, festivals are the bread and butter of your year. It's all the summer stuff and I live in one of the biggest countries in the world. So when I'm flying to the farthest away part of my country, it's, you know, it's a, six and a half hour flight. It's, you know, to drive there it takes 65 hours, so I have to fly. And if I'm taking five people with me, you know, I'm, it's the same amount of money for me to fly to Newfoundland, for example, as it is for me to fly to Japan from where I'm at in Canada. So I have to factor the, some of these things in. Like sometimes an offer won't be worth it. If I do get an offer for a big festival in the summer, I'm gonna take it out there even if I eat money because I know in the prairies in Western Canada, I can get the same money for no cost and I can drive and well, a little bit of cost and I can make that money back. But there's there's something to consider there. And also, you gotta consider your bottom line. You know, if if you're making, if you're a mid-level band and you're making $10,000 for a show, which is great, but it's on the East Coast, so there's a few thousand dollars gone. And plus, off the top of that 10,000, your agent is taking 10%. So you're only at 9,000. And then your travel costs, maybe you're at five after food and, and some rentals and things like that. 
Uh, and if you have a manager, they're going to be taking some percentage. So it all whittles down. You should always be doing the math first. I, I keep a spreadsheet and it's got formulas in it. Maybe I'll do a video on that actually. It's kind of cool. It shows my guarantee, what I make after taxes, what my agent cut is, what my manager cut is, which I don't have anymore. Um, and what the band cost is going to be and you know all that kind of thing it factors it in it assumes some sort of merch income and then it gives spits out the number at the end and it's not always in the green so one thing to consider costs so while i'm on that topic um promotional costs are a big thing too i i mean you know, the more i get deeper into this business the more i'm seeing that just showing up to a show is almost not enough anymore you're we're in the digital age now where sometimes Artists that have a big flashy brand because of a major label can't sell as many tickets as somebody like you. Somebody who's maybe lesser known, but they have massive Spotify streams or people know one of their videos or something like that. So tell people you're coming. Like, you know, spend a hundred bucks, spend a couple hundred bucks on a run uh, of shows and just promote them like. I mean, like you would be your own label. And that's the ultimate goal of being an indie is we can do that kind of stuff. There's ways that we can compete with major labels on an indie budget. And it's not easy, but we're going to figure it out together. Oh, yeah. One more thing. Uh, so while I'm on this topic of costs and things like that, I'm going to do another video on this as well. Um, if you have any questions about this, definitely hit me up below in the comments. But in Canada anyways, I know that America doesn't have this. I'm not sure about the UK or, or any European countries or anywhere else in the world. Australia maybe has it, I bet they do. Um, we have access to a lot of government funding, which is amazing. The systems are not perfect by any stretch and it can, it can be terribly frustrating, but it's there. So if you're going on a tour and you have more than six shows in a row uh, or X amount of days or whatever it is, you can apply for tour funding. And a lot of times this funding is wrapped into packages that really help. You can get just a marketing package that'll pay for a video, tour support, showcasing, radio promotion, and all that stuff. It's been huge for me. Actually, I, I did it so much for my own bands over the years that I fell into being a grant writer for a long time and I ended up raising like a quarter to half a million dollars for local bands, mostly just local bands here in Edmonton, Alberta, where I live. So, you know, you can imagine how far that money can go. It's, it's crazy and it doesn't have to be spent all here in Canada either. Let's do a video on that in a couple weeks and I'll tell you more about it, so keep posted, make sure you subscribe, subscribing so you can keep yourself in the loop, all right? All right, so that's it for me today. Uh, that's a couple pointers, hopefully that'll get you guys out playing and getting paid. Um, I hope, I don't know. <laughs> Let me know if there's anything else you want me to touch on when it comes to shows. Happy to do another video on this or explain some of the finer points if you want. And we will see you sometime. I love you. Bye.